Okay. Hello, everyone. So I'm here today with Saffron Barker. She's a famous YouTuber and uh, she posts vlogs on YouTube. And you might recognize her face from BBC Strictly Come Dancing from last year. So I just want to say a big hello to Saffron. Um, welcome to this brief interview. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm very grateful to be here. Um, so yeah, very excited. Great, fantastic. Okay, well, we're here today because I noticed that you've created a new programme focusing on some of the difficulties and the challenges that deaf and hard of hearing people face, um, which is based on your own experience of hearing loss as well. So I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so um, basically YouTube approached me and asked if I would film a documentary with them and it could be on anything that I wanted. Um, and obviously I share my life online, so it was quite hard for me to think of something, you know, that people didn't know about me. Um, and then I thought, actually, why not speak about something that was, was actually a huge part of my life? Uh, so when I was younger, um, I was born with a uh, hard of hearing. Um, and so I had to have lots of like operation, operations to try and improve my hearing. Um, and it was basically just a huge part of my life. Um, I had a lot and a lot of operations um, and for the first 10 years of my life it was just so different to it is now um, and so I thought actually this is something that I've never spoken about um, not really for any other reason than just I didn't even speak to my own family about it it was never anything we'd spoken about until this documentary because that was my life then and this is my life now and it's so different so it's nothing I even spoke to my parents about. Once I got my hearing back, that was kind of it. We never really spoke about it again. So it's something a lot of people don't know about me. Um, and I thought it's really important to talk about um, and something I just really want to raise awareness for. And not only that as well, educate myself, um, you know, about the deaf community, because actually, although it was... I was never deaf, I was just hard of hearing, but although that was a huge part of my life, uh, I actually don't know that much about it. So for me, I really wanted to not only be able to educate myself, but also educate other people. Um, and so hopefully that's what the documentary shows. Wow, absolutely, absolutely. I think it's really important that we spread that awareness because a lot of deaf people, um, hearing people don't really understand the barriers that deaf people face. So if you go back and think about your childhood then, do you think that, you know, that more should have been done to support you through your journey at that time? Um, I mean, I was extremely lucky because my parents never really made it like a big deal for me. Um, they wanted me to do all the things that I could do like I would want to do so like you know if I had really bad ears one day uh, or I had an operation the next day they would still let me go to my friend's party that day and stuff so for them I'm very lucky that they supported me fully um so as a child I didn't notice it so much but I know now if I was hard of hearing um I definitely think you know there's things that people can do um to raise awareness and support the deaf community especially as well because it's you know it's not visible if somebody's deaf so um I think that's like a huge part of the problem is um, especially when I was speaking to other people in my documentary these amazing people who were deaf they were saying it's really hard because a lot of the time people don't realize I'm deaf and especially with COVID as well it's really hard for them to communicate um so I definitely think a lot more can be done um what's happened Sorry, someone called. Um, I definitely think there's a lot more that can be done. Um, and I think also something huge that could easily be done is, um, you know, sign language should be taught in schools. Um, I know personally myself, I would have rather have learned um, sign language because obviously that's British sign language. I know there's so many people in the UK um, who are deaf. And so that to me is more important than learning a different language. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And um, you also uh, interviewed Jazzy as well. So we're a big fan of hers as well. And uh, she told you about some of her barriers that she's having because of the face masks and some of the communication barriers. So what was the main impact for 
for you there after interviewing Jazzy? Yeah, definitely. Oh my God, she was amazing, by the way. I absolutely love her. She has such a kind soul. Um, for her, she was just saying it's just really hard um, because when she doesn't wear a mask as well, um, which she doesn't have to wear a mask, but when she doesn't wear a mask, people also question her on it. They ask her, why aren't you wearing a mask? Um, because obviously they can't see that she's deaf. Um, and also she just explained that, you know, it's hard anyways. I went to a nail salon with her and even without the mask, um, she showed me how hard it was to communicate. But obviously with the mask, a big thing to her is actually lip reading. She lip reads a lot. So not being able to do that obviously makes it 10 times harder. Um, and nobody's putting that into consideration, um, obviously during these times. So it's obviously a struggle um, for a lot of people that are deaf. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Sign Health, um, here at Sign Health, we did a, a survey uh, and we looked at what the health impacts were uh, for the deaf community during lockdown. And the survey actually showed that there was increased anxiety and worry and isolation because of the communication barriers that deaf people are facing. Yeah, the um, face masks are contributing to that. But I think what's your experience yourself with with face masks i mean are you are you struggling with the face masks as well or what's what's your general experience of, of the face masks during this time i mean for me personally um i mean obviously for me it's fine however um i know it's hard for me when i want to go and see my grandparents